สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. Today we are going to make a recipe that's been requested of me for pretty much as long as I've been doing Hot Thai Kitchen. It's a kind of noodle soup called Yen Ta Pho. Now, a few years ago, I made a video in Thailand about the top five noodle soups that you must have. When you visit, and this is one of them. And today, you're finally going to be able to make it at home. So let's get started. What a lot of people don't know about Yen Ta Pho is that all it is is a standard clear broth noodle soup with a special red sauce added to it. That's it. So when you order Yen Ta Pho from a noodle stand, they're just gonna make you a regular noodle soup. With this sauce added to it, now they're going to add different protein and vegetables to make it sort of classic to Yen Ta Pho. But this sauce is really the key, and that's what we're going to make first. So the main ingredient is this red bean curd right here. Now you can get this at a lot of different Chinese grocery stores because it is a Chinese ingredient. And so what it is is little chunks of bean curd or tofu that's been fermented with a special kind of yeast that gives off this red color, and it's got a really unique smell to it. That's that's similar to miso, but yet it has a distinct flavor. Just two cubes of this, and they always come in cubes. Sorry, did I say two cubes? I meant four cubes. And then I'm also going to add some of the liquid that it comes in. Ooh, smells like Yen Ta Pho already. Hmm, not the greatest smell on its own, but it's good when mixed with other things. And to this, I'm gonna add some sriracha hot sauce. Now, this is a Thai sriracha. You can just use the rooster brand sriracha if you want, and some garlic. And I'm gonna add some white vinegar. Now, the flavor profile of this sauce is sweet and sour. Okay, and this is the sour part. Some white sugar. That's the sweet. A little saltiness. I like to add a little fish sauce to it. Some people add salt, but you know me. I love fish sauce. Finally, as an option, you can add some fresh chilies if you want to make it a little bit spicier. You can add some Thai chilies. It also adds a little more color. But if you're making this for so that your kids can have it, um, you can skip it. All right, and now I'm going to blitz this up. Now, if you compare the color of this with what you might find at a street vendor's, this is significantly less vibrant fusion neon pink because that color is actually food coloring that they like to add to make it more pink. Okay, but if you make natural Yen Ta Pho sauce at home, it'll be a little bit more sort of on the orange and more natural looking, basically. But the flavor, trust me, is just as good. And then simmer the sauce for a few minutes to cook the garlic and the chilies, and that's it. As with all noodle soups, it's all really easy. The only hard part is gathering all the different ingredients. So, in front of me are sort of the classic things that go into a yen ta pho. You obviously don't have to have all of this. I'm just going to show you what's common. I'm using fresh wide rice noodles, but you can use any kind of noodles you want: egg noodles, the pho noodles. But in Thailand, for yen ta pho, this seems to be the most popular choice for some reason. Fish balls of various types or seafood balls for yen ta pho. For whatever reason, we don't eat it with chicken or. Beef or pork, it's always seafood. So fish balls you can buy at Asian grocery stores, at the seafood counter. Sometimes they sell them frozen. Moving on, some vegetables. Now normally they would use water spinach. Can't find it here. Regular baby spinach works just fine. Now this next one might seem like an unimportant ingredient, but is so important. This is fried garlic, and all you do is chop up some garlic. Fry it low and slow with gentle bubbles until they're nice and golden brown. Now in Thailand, you will not find a single noodle soup bowl without fried garlic put on it. That's how important it is, and it's super easy. Over here, some tofu puffs. Tofu puffs are basically really airy tofu, and you can get it at a Chinese grocery store. The bag comes like this. When you put this in soup, it absorbs all that holes, absorbs the broth like a sponge. Here, completely optional, but a lot of times you'll find fried wontons garnishing the top of your yen ta pho. Finally, a little garnish. You can do some chopped cilantro like I have here, or green onions, or both if you want. All right, so the broth. I've got here some plain pork stock, and what I did for this is I simply boiled pork bones for a couple of hours. I added a little aromatics here and there, but 
for this because the yenta fo sauce is so strong that you don't if it's just bones and water, you do just fine. And I have a video tutorial for how to make your own pork stock as well. The most important thing is that this is unsalted because you want to be able to control the amount of salt. So to this, I'm going to add some soy sauce. And I'm also going to do a little bit of salt because you don't want to add all soy sauce and then the broth turns a dark color. Just a little bit of sugar to cut the salt. So you want to taste this broth and what you want it to taste like is a well-seasoned soup but quite mild, not strong, so comforting like a chicken noodle soup. Mm. Perfect. All right, here we are. I feel like a noodle vendor. So we're going to blanch our noodles first and the water for these fresh noodles, I actually don't like it to be on a rolling boil because these overcook really easily. So I'm just going to quickly, like literally one, two, three, and then up because these are fully cooked and I just need to get it hot. Some fish tofu. How about a couple of each? That sounds good. Tofu puffs. I like to blanch them as well because they've been fried, right? So I like to wash off the oil that's coating them. So in that goes. Now, if your fish balls are coming straight out of the fridge or sometimes frozen, they'll obviously need a long time, but mine's been sitting out for a while. They're not super cold, so just a few seconds. They're fully cooked, so you don't need to cook them. You just need to heat them up. Into the bowl. Ooh. Spinach going in just a little bit, and spinach wilts quite a bit. Make sure you shake off as much water as you can because you don't want to dilute your noodles. Okay, dress it with the yenta fo sauce. So how much yenta fo sauce you add is completely up to you. But I think about a tablespoon per is a good place to start because you can always add, but you can't take away. I'm going to add a little bit more. Some garlic oil and fried garlic. Ooh. And then the broth this is the last thing to go on. Ooh, yes, a little bit. Okay, not the last thing to go on. Some cilantro and garnish with a thing of wonton. And there you go. That looks just like on the street, but even better because we made it. So you want to give it a good mix and you can see that broth turning a nice sort of pinkish color. Mm. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Oh, that broth is so good. It's a really distinct flavor. You cannot mistake it for anything else. It's sour, a little bit sweet, but I like it to lead with sour, really strong. So I don't need to, you know, a lot of times when you go to Thailand, they'll give you extra seasoning, sugar, fish sauce. I don't need to season this with anything else. It's a little bit spicy, just enough, and it's got that, the flavor of that bean curd is just so unique. Uh, and if you like yin tafo, if you've been to Thailand, you can definitely easily recreate this at home. So the recipe, as always, will be on hotthaikitchen.com. When you make it, send me a photo on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And oh, if you haven't subscribed to the show, do so right here so you never miss an awesome episode like this. And I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal.